we complete our series of clips with Michael Davies following his first trip on the Irish narrow gauge. Michael has a torturous journey from Arigna to Sligo. On that first trip, having got to uh, Arigna, got back to, um, I, I couldn't go back to Balmore and draw on because I was needing, seriously needing a bed for the night, having had nothing, no cabin, of course, I couldn't afford a cabin on the mail boat the previous night, so I'd had no sleep since the Thursday night. I'd been at work on Friday. So on the uh, Saturday, I was in serious need of getting to a bed. Um, and I'd got, uh, I'd, I'd worked out that having got off the train from Shanbo, there was a bus to Carrick on Shannon, which was, um, which would connect into a train to Sligo. But, um, uh, but if I'd gone to Balmore, of course, and then to Drummond, I, I would have been in Drummond for a while and ended up on the night mail, which wasn't due into Sligo till 1 a.m. on the Sunday morning. So I thought, well, I can cut this corner off by catching the bus. So I had time to have some tea at one, at one and ninepence, plain tea, it was called. So it's just a pot of tea and, uh, uh, and uh, buttered scones or something, uh, <laughs> that filled me up, uh, and then catch this Great Northern Railway bus, which, which was kept in a garage in Tumshambo, and that was its base, and it worked Carrick on Shannon to Bundoran, and it turned up this lovely blue Great Northern bus, and I got on it, and I think it was more or less on at the time it said, but it didn't go. And I said to, there was a conductor, driver and conductor. Oh, he said we can't go until the till the CIE bus from Sligo to Cavan arrives with, with some parcels on it, papers or something. And it was much delayed. So we finally got away, and then we got to a place where there was a, a cottage away out of, of some narrow boreen, and a woman coming out. She never came out of the house till she saw the bus coming. But as it was about 200 yards from her house to the road, the bus was three or four minutes waiting for her. Uh, the conductor said, ah, you'll be all right, he said. The trains are always late. And fortunately, the train was, the bus was booked to go from Carrick Town through the station. But really, the, the, the reason for that was to bring people who arrived on the train from Dublin to back into the town. Well, so we get to the station, uh, ah, you'll be all right, I go up the steps. Oh, it's gone, it's gone, ten minutes. Ten minutes gone. What does one do then? So the conductor said, oh dear, you know, we'll, we'll take you back to the road. We're going back into town now with these passengers off the train. We'll drop you on the corner. And uh, all you need to do is, you, you'll get a lift to slide. Uh, you, you just look uh, for any vehicle coming along that's uh, registration is um, uh, EI, which is County Sligo, you see. <laughs> but this is, uh, it was a lovely June evening. This was 23rd of June, 1951, almost the longest day. Uh, the only vehicle that eventually did come was a, a truck full of, probably, they were miners from Arigna. They look pretty filthy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it stopped, of course, but there was no room in the cab. I had to climb up into the back with these fellows, and I didn't know what they were talking about. I couldn't understand them, but I wasn't used to the Irish lingo, especially the, these chaps uh, uh, were very uh, um, broad, um, very broad uh, accents. So um, we, we finally got to boil. And, uh, that's as far as they were going. So I, could, I tried to get a lift on, but nothing doing. So I went to the railway station in Boyle, and the station master was very chatty. He was on duty all the time and said, we'll put you on the night mail, which of course I could have gone by train via Ballon Wall to catch. I said, well, I know where to stay. Oh, not, no problem. So he took me into the town, abandoned the station. We walked together into the town and he went to the public telephone kiosk, lots of winding in those days, and finally got through to this 
uh, woman in uh, Sligo, Mrs. Phibbs, opposite station, and she said she'd wait up for me and leave a light on and uh, there'd be a bed in her place. So, uh, so that's how I ended my first day in Ireland at 1 a.m. on the Sunday morning. The, uh, the cathedral uh, clock was just striking one as I got into, the, uh, into this hotel. So that was day one in Ireland.